these squirrels are having an absolute battle over the sunflower seeds at my bird feeder. But these squirrels are lovingly grooming each other and playing in the trees. So what's the difference between these two squirrels and why are some squirrels so territorial while other squirrels are very social? The difference is that there's actually two types of squirrels. And the really cool thing is that if you know how to tell whether a squirrel is territorial or social, that can play a huge role in how you interpret and understand its behavior and communication. The two common territorial squirrels are red squirrels and Douglas squirrels. And outside of the first few weeks of their life and a very short period of days or hours around the mating time, these squirrels live lives that are essentially solitary and not only avoid interaction with other squirrels, but devote significant amounts of time to protecting their territories from invaders. They'll make bite marks on trees, they'll leave their scent around, and they will make vocalizations from key defense positions. These vocalizations are one of the key indicators for me of territorial squirrels. Territorial squirrels vocalize a lot. They make their presence known very frequently. And because of this, they're very hard to miss. Sometimes you can get a situation where there's such an extreme abundance of food, like around this bird feeder, that you can actually see territorial squirrels sharing a communal feeding station. But these situations are pretty tense, and if they come too close, these dramatic fights will ensue, and they chase each other around in this super intense way. And they have these short-range territorial calls that go on for long periods of time whenever these squirrels get too close. Social squirrels, on the other hand, like gray squirrels and fox squirrels, will very commonly interact with other squirrels of their own species. They will sleep together in groups for warmth during winter. They will meet each other on the branches to help with grooming and generally just playing. There are social hierarchies within their communities, but they don't specifically defend a particular territory. And the only time that gray squirrels will really become territorial of an area is when you have a pregnant female and she's getting ready to have her babies or she's protecting her newborn babies, she will isolate herself and will protect her area from other squirrels. But then the rest of the time, it's pretty much a free-for-all and they share food very readily and they're just overall way more social than red squirrels and Douglas squirrels. As a result, social squirrels don't have the same repertoire of territorial calls that red and Douglas squirrels have. They tend to only really vocalize when there's some sort of danger nearby, like a cat or an owl or a hawk, they will make alarm calls. But otherwise, they're much more quiet. They also tend to be quite a bit bigger than the territorial squirrels, like red squirrels and Douglas squirrels. And this is actually a very useful way to help you identify them and tell them apart. Once you get the general size in your mind, it becomes very clear that social squirrels are noticeably larger than territorial squirrels. The other thing about social squirrels is that there's a lot of fluency of colors. Both gray squirrels and fox squirrels come in all different colors, ranging from black to red to blonde and gray, all these different colors that really don't have anything to do with what their parents look like. It's just something in the genetics of these squirrels that means every once in a while a squirrel just turns blonde and every once in a while half of them are black and that's just how it works. So when you see a black squirrel hanging out with a gray squirrel, these are all the same type of squirrel and this color fluency is actually an indicator that you're looking at a social squirrel. So why does this difference even exist? Why don't they all just live in happy, peaceful squirrel communities where everyone helps each other? One possibility is that it has to do with adapting their survival strategy to specialize in different types of food and habitat. So one thing you'll notice is territorial squirrels like red and Douglas squirrels tend to be more associated with coniferous forests where the keystone food for squirrels is cones. And these cones are filled with little tiny seeds that are very nutritious, but it's it takes a lot of work to get the energy out. And basically what red squirrels will do is they'll store up years worth of food in centralized food caches. And even after they've done that, they will go out and they'll find more and they'll just keep hoarding and hoarding and hoarding. And they'll even raid the caches of other squirrels to try and steal all their food too. They're obsessed with it and they want it all for themselves. So they try to keep everyone away from their caches. So 
it's a very high stakes game of protecting massive hordes of food. Social squirrels, on the other hand, tend to live in more deciduous areas that have a lot of big meaty nut trees like oaks. And when they bury nuts in preparation for winter, they don't have centralized caches and instead they'll scatter them all over the place and bury them pretty much anywhere in much smaller amounts. So this difference in the predominant winter food source could play a very big role in why some squirrels are so incredibly territorial and other squirrels are very communal and social. A single acorn has a lot more energy than a few tiny spruce seeds and it takes a lot less work to get that energy out. And when we take into account the boom and bust cycles of seed and nut producing trees, it suggests that food security might be a much bigger issue for the territorial squirrels in northern and coniferous forests than it is in deciduous habitats. So next time you look at a squirrel, take a moment to ponder whether that squirrel is a territorial squirrel or a social squirrel. Are there signs that you can see in its behavior that lets you know you might be dealing with a territorial squirrel? Or are there signs that it might be a social squirrel? What do you observe? Have you ever noticed this difference? And how does this inform you more deeply about their behavior?